State House Democrats say they're staying in Washington for the long haul. Tonight, we hear from both sides on what they want done. Plus, several state Republicans say the Democrats traveled on your dime. But is that true? We look for answers. And thunderstorms hit the Brazos Valley this evening. Will the storms continue throughout the week? Chief Meteorologist Matt Hines is on top of the forecast tonight. Your KRHD News starts right now. Thanks for joining us at 10. I'm Naya Gonzalez. And for Holly Jones tonight, the special session is in limbo. The state Senate is business as usual, while Republican lawmakers in the House have voted to arrest their Democratic counterparts who took off to D.C. KRHG News reporter Rachel Espayat spoke to a local lawmaker about this battle making national headlines. Tuesday was meant to be a day filled with House of Representatives voting on a variety of bills in Austin, but that plan was derailed when more than 50 of the Democratic representatives were missing. It was pretty disappointing that, that our colleagues would walk out on the citizens of Texas and not allow us to conduct our business. The Democratic representatives left for Washington, D.C. Monday after opposing legislation that would ban drive through and 24-hour voting options and further restrict voting by mail. The bills, as written, makes it harder for Texans to vote and easier for partisan poll watchers to harass and intimidate voters. We are always going to push back against these sort of bigoted, racist, Jim Crow 2.0 style voting laws whenever you decide to bring them up. In a 76 to 4 vote, representatives back in Austin voted to authorize the arrests of the Democrats who took off for D.C. Lemon said opposing the bill did not warn Democrats neglecting other bills on the table. Let's make sure we put our heads together and solve the problem for the citizens of Texas. And you don't do that by walking out on your duty. This special session is slated to go on until August 7th, but Governor Abbott says he will continue to call special sessions until the job is done. In Brian, Rachel Espayat, KRHD News. As Rachel reported, arrest warrants were authorized today for the House Democrats who were not at the Capitol without a legitimate excuse. Members, the sergeants at arms and any officers appointed by him are directed to send for all absentees whose attendance is not excused for the purpose of securing and maintaining their attendance under warrant of arrest if necessary. Now, those arrest warrants do not have effects across state lines. So why did lawmakers fly to D.C. instead of going to Oklahoma, Louisiana, or even perhaps New Mexico? Well, back in 2003, Democrats broke quorum and went to both Oklahoma and New Mexico. When asked by Republicans, both states did not allow Texas law enforcement to cross state lines. This morning in front of the U.S. Capitol, House Democrats say they're standing in solidarity with voting rights across the nation and supporting the for the People Act. The act has currently stalled over the threat of a filibuster. State lawmakers are also hoping their actions will encourage Democratic senators to kill the filibuster. What is the For the People Act? Well, it would increase voter access, election integrity and security, campaign finance and ethics for all members of the federal government. It would also create an independent redistricting commission for congressional redistricting and require certain political candidates to disclose 10 years of tax returns. This is a long game. This isn't something that we just flew here for a vacation. We're here to work. We've been working all day. That was State Rep Michelle Beckley from Carleton. While she and her Democratic colleagues say that they are in Washington to work, others say they abandon their jobs. But rather than do their jobs in Texas, yesterday House Democrats abandoned both our state and the millions of Texans that they represent, and they decamped to Washington D.C. Yeah, when faced with the prospect of defeat, and for better or for worse, the legislative process is all about arithmetic. You're not always going to win every debate you're involved in, but that doesn't mean you, you, uh, you leave the state and refuse to do your job. It's theatrics. You know it. We all know it. Stop lying to yourselves. It's a game. They're wasting the Texans taxpayer dollars. 
Governor Greg Abbott and other Republicans say the House lawmakers traveled on your dime, but is that true? And if you're not paying for it, well, who is? State Rep Trey Martinez Fisher, who you see on your screen, says the House Democratic Caucus paid for the two planes and buses. Martinez Fisher adds that he's the he is paying for all of the hotel rooms tonight out of his campaign account. Civil rights attorney Lee Merritt is hoping to become the state's next top lawyer. He said in March that he would run for attorney general, but made the announcement official this morning. Merritt is a Democrat and will face fellow lawyer and former Galveston mayor Joe Jorsky, who in the primary, Merritt says he would focus on voting rights, fixing the power grid, reigning in property taxes, ending mass incarceration, and challenging gubernatorial overreach. COVID cases are on the rise again in nearly every state. The difference in this surge is the more highly transmissible Delta variant. Patients are also younger and nearly all that end up in the hospital are unvaccinated. We really don't have great and effective, you know, therapies for COVID-19 once you become ill and have to come into the hospital. A third of the, uh, of the cases in the United States are coming out of five hotspots. Uh, Florida, Louisiana, Arkansas, uh, Missouri, and Nevada. And in places like Missouri, where ICUs are packed, you're going to see a, a surprising amount of death. This is completely avoidable. It doesn't need to be this way. More often than not, the lower a state's vaccination rate, the higher the case count. U.S. health officials are now investigating the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine and an extremely rare cases of a neurological complication. The J&J vaccine has been updated with a warning. Now the complication can lead to muscle weakness and possible paralysis. It's happened in fewer than one in a million vaccine doses. Experts say the benefits of vaccination still outweigh the risks. You're always gonna find some adverse event associated with vaccination. When you vaccinate tens and tens and tens of millions of people, you will find an unusual or a rare event. About three to 5,000 people get this condition every year with or without vaccines. Now it's also very rare, but serious blood clots are another risk of Johnson & Johnson and AstraZeneca's vaccines. Now, independent scientists are looking into whether they can tweak the vaccines to lower or get rid of the risk altogether. Researchers worldwide are sharing information as to why these blood clots happen. European officials say it happens once or twice for every 100,000 AstraZeneca vaccinations, and the rate's even lower for Johnson & Johnson. Now, we're hearing stories of long-haul COVID patients struggling, some even being dismissed by medical professionals. But there are programs out there that work. I had a lot of the complications from COVID, so fighting back hard to come back and being very appreciative of all the care I got. Ahead in our lineup, the COVID rehab and recovery program that the CDC is looking at and where it's available. Is the Brazos Valley done with all the rain? Well, who knows, but Chief Meteorologist Matt Hines sure does, and we'll get a check on him next. And now let's get a check on weather with Matt. And we are looking at calmer conditions after a few showers and thunderstorms roll through earlier today. Not everyone's seeing the rain, but things are partly cloudy now and 74 degrees and it feels like 74 that dew point down to 68. So with some of those storms going in, well, it did cool us down and that's made it a pleasant evening across the Brazos Valley. And as we check out 24 hour rain totals, looks like the heaviest of the rain was just west of Bryan College Station right there on the border of Brazos and Burleson counties and then over to the east across Grimes County as well. But we all did see some at least appreciable rainfall for some of us. Some light amounts of rain did occur here across Bryan College Station. Now we are seeing that dissipate across the area as we are losing the daytime heating. But we're going to probably see this manifest itself over the next couple of days. Along the Gulf Coast, we'll get the sea breeze front to develop in the afternoon. That will push in more isolated the widely scattered thunderstorms will be possible and that's probably going to continue for the rest of the week so let's check out your future track things are quiet right now then as we make our way into the morning hours partly to mostly cloudy skies across the area partly cloudy in the afternoon and look at that maybe a few more isolated thunderstorms with that sea breeze front coming in from the i-10 corridor in the houston area as we head toward five six o'clock in the afternoon then we do it all over again starting off dry in the morning probably staying dry for most of the day on thursday but 
A few widely scattered thunderstorms will be possible, so we're going to keep about a 20 to 30 percent chance of rain in for the rest of the week, probably going into your weekend as well. So tonight, temperatures dropping down into the 70s for 75 for Bryan College Station, 73 Hearn and 71 in Rockdale. Tomorrow, highs into the low 90s at about 5 to 6 degrees, and you're going to get what it feels like. So it'll feel like the mid to upper 90s, even though those actual highs will be in the low 90s. And normal this time of year is 95. So we are staying a little bit below normal, and we're probably going to stay that way here. In the 10-day forecast, as temperatures will be right around 91 the next couple of afternoons. Again, a 20 to 30% chance for a few showers and thunderstorms here and there through Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, 20% chances of rain. And then maybe some slightly cooler temperatures and slightly better chances for rain by the middle of next week. More than one in four people who contract COVID will develop long haul symptoms, according to multiple studies. And it's happening to people regardless of how sick they got. In many cases, the recovery can be just as hard as fighting the virus. Every day was a struggle. I was in bed for 33 days. I couldn't walk. All my muscles atrophied. I had every, I had lots of complications. I had foot drop. I had nerve damage, muscle damage, diabetes, lung. I couldn't, my uh, SVO2 levels were really low. Diane Shields is a COVID survivor. The home dialysis nurse got severely ill in April of last year. She ended up on a ventilator for two weeks, then was in inpatient rehab for a month. Now, luckily she was referred to a outpatient rehab program that was created specifically for COVID long haulers. I'm a nurse, so I'm used to taking care of others. I'm a type A personality, so I'm used to control. So when all that was taken away from me, it was like I either had two options, you know, sit there and be sad and feel sorry for myself or be positive and fight through it. We needed a much more comprehensive response. It couldn't be a cookie cutter, one size fits all response to the pandemic. Alan Evans is talking about Select Medical's recovery and reconditioning program. This is video that they gave us of Shields going through it. It's tailored to physical and mental health services based on a patient's long haul symptoms. Now, in the first of several studies with the CDC, Select Medical compared COVID patients with those in a similar cancer recovery program. It was really striking that the patients who were recovering from COVID-19 were reporting poorer physical and mental health than the patients in our cancer recovery program. Um, they were complaining of more impact on their, on their daily functions, so their ability to do the, their chores or their job or just go up and down the stairs. COVID long haulers needed more therapy treatment than cancer survivors, and their tolerance to rehabilitation can fluctuate a lot. All the therapy helped me. It's just that there's stages you go through. Like they kept saying to me, it's baby steps. You're going to go forward and then you may go backwards. Don't get to start discouraged. Select Medical will have future research coming out on the best approaches to COVID long haul rehab and what patients can expect. Insurance does cover the treatments. Select Medical has nearly 2000 locations across 37 states. All right, next in our lineup, a new program hopes to help schools reopen safely this fall, even if students can't get vaccinated. How nurses plan to track and isolate COVID cases so schools don't have to close again. As we look ahead to the new school year, states are taking action on vaccines and what will be required. At least seven states are enacting legislation specific to public schools prohibiting them from requiring either COVID vaccines or proof of vaccination for students. Public health leaders are concerned that this could hurt efforts to control COVID and emerging variants. Meanwhile, the CDC's new guidance for schools is that they should fully reopen in the fall. That is, even if they can't take steps to curb the spread of COVID. But Chris Conti shows us how a new program is helping schools reopen safely, even if students can't get vaccinated. Come along to the nurse's office with Braxton. Good morning, Braxton. Braxton is not sick. Feels fine, actually. One, two, three. Oh, good job. And while this nine-year-old has some trouble hearing, Braxton has no problem talking about the COVID test he just got. Yeah, it feels so weird, but it did not hurt me so much. This is the Ohio School for the Deaf. The state's only public school serving kids who are deaf or hard of hearing. This is my first time, Ashley. And they are part of a nationwide pilot program working to test kids like Braxton for COVID. One of the fastest ways to ensure that schools can stay open and we can provide services to our students is to make sure that we're safe. We have quick surveillance. 
Toby Reeves Valentine is the school nurse. The beauty of this program is that it enables her to do all the testing right here in school and results come back within 24 hours. I see it moving forward to being a, a, another tool, like we do our vision screenings. It's another tool for parents, families to feel safe. For Toby, so much of this is personal. I wouldn't want that for anybody. Early on in the pandemic, she lost both of her sisters to COVID, and she's determined to keep the virus from spreading if she can. Losing pieces of your life, and that's what happens. So, uh, but no, and uh, I know I make them proud by helping other people. There's another layer to this program as well. Moving into the fall, it will ensure that schools like this one can stay open if cases start to spike again, and if the vaccine still hasn't been approved for all age levels. About 4 million kids under the age of 12 have tested positive for COVID in the last year. They represent nearly 14% of all new cases. Currently, Pfizer and Moderna are conducting vaccine trials for kids between the ages of six months and 11 years old. Even though we all want to be done with the pandemic, the reality is the virus is not done with us. Mark Stevenson is with Thermo Fisher. They are the ones who collect and test all those samples sent in by the Ohio School for the Deaf. It takes advantage of federal funding that was made available for testing. The program is called Ready, Check, Go. And while most of the country is emerging from COVID, Testing in residential school environments like this one is still critically important, especially when students are too young to be vaccinated. We need to be able to track and isolate any cases so that we're not shutting down schools. These are our students and families, um, and we want to make sure they're safe and they feel protected and we're able to be, keep public education open. And that might be the most important lesson anyone here can walk away with. In Columbus, Ohio, I'm Chris Conti. Toxic blue-green algae blooms are showing up across the country. Health officials know that humans and pets should avoid coming into contact with that algae, but what about the air you breathe in nearby? As Maya Rodriguez tells us, there's now an effort underway to figure that out. Inside this air-conditioned lab. So I'm gonna turn on a pump that'll push air through. Floats a summer scourge. They've been around. We think three and a half billion years. These ancient organisms are toxic blue-green algae, also known as cyanobacteria. And you can see the clouds of the cyanobacteria moving around in there. Dr. Barry Rosen is a professor at the Water School at Florida Gulf Coast University. He's one of the preeminent experts in blue-green algae. We just took our study to the next level. That study is looking to figure out what happens when blue-green algae goes airborne, and this specially designed machine may hold some answers. This is an artificial lung in many senses. Using air to move the water around, filters in this machine capture airborne toxic blue-green algae particles, similar to how our lungs would if we breathed it in. We know that it probably gets it into our nasal passages, how much gets into our lungs, is it a concentration to be concerned of? Because we find it pretty much everywhere. That's anywhere freshwater bodies meet pollution from agricultural and development runoff. Coupled with summer's high temperatures, blue-green algae can rapidly grow. They like warm water. Uh, they start making more of each other in warm water. And so that's a concern we have looking forward with uh, a warming planet, is that some of these blue-green algae blooms might be more common uh, and than they were in the past. And potentially exposing more people to more blue-green algae. Just in the past month, blue-green algae blooms have taken hold not just in Florida, but in lakes in Colorado, Kansas, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Ohio, and New York, among others. A lot of these algal blooms are actually indicators that there's something wrong with the environment and we're the people that are ultimately responsible for doing that. And the toxins are potentially dangerous. Well, the concentration that can harm you is very, very low. It's, they're very potent natural toxins. But the aerosols we know very little about, and we're working on that very diligently. In an effort to keep everyone safe. We need to solve that piece of the puzzle. In Fort Myers, Florida, I'm Maya Rodriguez. All right, Maya, thank you. And in addition to the work that Dr. Rosen and his team are doing, the CDC is starting a study this month. Now, everything just keeps getting more expensive. New numbers out today from the Consumer Price Index show that inflation went up 0.9% in June. That is now a more than 5% increase since last year. The auto industry is continuing to account for most of the inflation with car rentals, used cars, and gas topping the list for the highest price hikes with laundry machines, airfare, and hotels following.
Now, finally in our lineup today, you have seen the hiring bonuses that more companies are offering. The latest incentive could be giving you a better job title. We're gonna get answers on what perks could actually come with that. You should continue to have a lot of options if you're looking for a new job this year. More than half of U.S. companies plan to add new permanent positions in the second half of 2021. Another 48% plan to fill vacated positions or bring back furloughed employees. This is according to a survey out today from talent solutions firm Robert Half. Now, people who've been in business for decades say they've never seen the war on talent like it is right now. And one incentive to watch for that you may not have heard about is a better job title to get you in the door. What we're finding is that existing employees as well as new employees, prospective employees, are being offered new job titles, changes in the job titles, in addition to those other areas, sign-on uh, bonuses or additional bonuses for existing employees um, to help retain the, their services. 40% of companies tell Robert Half that they're offering better job titles. This could be changing a title from accounting assistant to staff accountant, for example. Now, something to watch for, this may not always mean better pay. I think what, what we're seeing is that you know, you've got salary bands within organizations that are have to be uh, adhered to. You've got existing employees that, you know, you can't just bring somebody in um, at a higher pay that uh, doesn't have additional experience and they're at the same level. But companies believe just having that recognition with your job title will be a big part of retention. Now, the number of people quitting jobs has been on the rise. But hiring experts warn, if you are looking to switch careers, it's going to be difficult right now without getting new skills. Now, the U.S. market for hemp expected to triple by 2027, and hemp production is ramping up in some places that you might not expect. Tomorrow, why farmers who have typically focused on citrus are now turning to hemp instead. Jimmy Kilmer's up next. Good morning, Texas is on the air tomorrow at 5 a.m. Thanks for joining us and have a good night.